Hey everyone, it's been a while. Huh? I wasn't really sure how to start this off, so I'll just get right into it. I apologize for the big delay. I know it's been quite some time since the last episode came out, and I really appreciate everyone's patience. A lot happened in the last year and just... yeah. I'll have a brief as can be explanation at the end for those who want to know, but y'all have been waiting long enough, so I'll move on with things. Today we'll be exploring episode 5, which interestingly enough primarily revolves around Chen and Hoshiguma, sort of like a Zuko and Iroh episode of Avatar. One last thing I wanted to mention is that with as big of a cast as this game has, it's inevitable that some of my characters' voices are going to have to be shared but I'm gonna try my best to give everyone their own energy slash personality in a way that I think emulates them, but I apologize ahead of time if some characters are hard to distinguish for those listening in. Anyways, I'll get on with things for real this time. As always, spoiler alerts if you haven't read the story or watched the previous episodes, and with that, let's begin. Things start out in a black void when the voice of a child can be heard stating, We'll be friends from now on. Those adults won't be able to bully us anymore. Don't be afraid. From now on, I'll help you, no matter what happens. If something bad happens to me, you'd better help me too. That's what friends are for. <laughs> we'll always be together, right? So, do you still remember what you did when that old duke snatched her away? Suddenly, another voice starts to fade in. Can you really do whatever it takes for the sake of lone men? Now, Wei Yen Wu, what or who are you going to sacrifice this time? We then hear Chen struggling to wake up when the voice returns. Save her. Hey, wake up. Let me through. Let me... Officer Chen, wake up. Tch, drop dead. I don't have time for this right now. <coughs> Finally awake. <coughs> oh, oh, Shiguma. Hurry, reunion? Are you done daydreaming? <laughs> Good grief, you're a mess. Chen then awakes to see a young woman with blonde cat-like features standing over Chen with an empty cup. Why are you here? Where's my squad? And what if I told you they were all killed in action? If you're itching for a beating, then you'd better queue up behind reunion. I see your tongue is as sharp as ever. How come your performance in battle doesn't follow suit? Hoshiguma then walks into the room. What's going on over here? I leave for a moment and you two are already at each other's throats? Miss Swire, would it kill you to be a little less sarcastic towards her? Hmm. You too, Chen. You only just woke up. Wait, why do you look like you just got into a fight with a watering cart? Ask her. Young lady, what's this empty glass doing here? I remember pouring a glass of water for each of you. She was spouting nonsense in her sleep. <sighs> Good grief. Chen then inquires about their current location and Hoshiguma reports that they're in a cabin within Rose Island before Swire chimes in, stating that her squad attempted to retreat back to Lone Min about 45 minutes ago, but they were followed by a group of Reunion soldiers who had ambushed them. At the time, Swire had teamed up with Rhode Islands to help defeat the enemy forces, and just as everything was coming to an end, Chen took a blast from an explosion head-on and was knocked out cold. Really? Are you asking if you really let someone sneak up on you like that, or if you really managed to get hit with explosives, but only ended up unconscious? Chen dismisses her comment and asks about the situation in Lone Man. Swire remarks that it's a complete mess and seems to imply that the setback they face was mostly because of Chen before reporting that the Special Ops Division of the LGD was gathering with her squad before meeting up with R.I. and the rest of LGD. Hoshiguma then comments about how they'll be approaching Reunion and questions the motivation behind leading an assault straight to the heart of the city. By destroying all of Reunion's rally points, we'll fully utilize the advantage you've created for us. So, in other words, a siege? Swire confirms, stating that they'll use this opportunity to wipe them out before they establish a foothold on their takeover. Chen then speaks up and criticizes their plan, stating that they'll be forcing them to converge faster and that they can't guarantee that they'll be able to hold them off before LGD manages to reassemble, much less ensure that they'll all be taken out. 
We don't need any of your advantages, nor do I need to hear you lecture me about strategies. You don't have a say in the matter, Chen. Even if you are the head of the Special Ops Division and enjoy a certain degree of autonomy during times of war, you cannot absolve yourself of all accountability. Judging by your tone, you're trying to challenge me? I'll take you on, but not right now. We each have our own orders. The only thing that matters is we do our job. Chen, the LGD has fallen, and Reunion has taken control of the LGD headquarters. This is your fault. Why were you not here when Loneman needed you? Was that also an order? If you were neglecting your duties, Loneman wouldn't have fallen. I'm ashamed of you, Chen. You should resign immediately and let me take over the Special Ops Division. Swire, you're not authorized to make such a demand. Hey! Even setting aside our bad blood, I don't think you're capable of taking on this responsibility. You very well could have declared, Chief Wei Yan Wu has issued an order for the incumbent operations leader of the LGD to step down and transfer all responsibilities to Superintendent Swire. Can you do that? Does an order like that exist? <laughs> don't call me that. If you can't, then just worry about your own job. Nothing good will come of you catching this hot potato, Miss S. How many times do I have to tell you? That's not my last name. Listen here, Swire is just my code name. Otherwise, call me Beatrix Schwire. Got it? I don't give a damn what you call yourself. Nobody can tell the difference anyway. H hey! I'm not in the mood to play with you. Run along and find something else to do, kid. Chen, you really are a piece of sh oh. And you can shove it up yours. Hm. I'm leaving. Hoshiguma, I'd recommend you keep that crazy reptile on a leash. Don't come running to me if she ends up dead in a ditch somewhere. Uh, sorry little miss. Both of you sure are ill-tempered. Despite everything she said, we're still grateful for your assistance. <laughs> Never again. I want to see her bleed. Swire then storms off before Chen speaks back up. What happened to her back? It looks like a flesh wound. When she was carrying you to cover, a reunion caster blasted the wall just meters behind her. You should try being a little nicer to her. I'm sure it won't kill either of you to stop acting like arch enemies once in a while. <sighs> I know. Suddenly, an RI operator calls out from behind the door, asking to come in. After Hoshiguma lets him in, he approaches Chen to talk about the upcoming mission, as they have already assembled some squads and were ready to depart as soon as she was ready. She confirms and states that she'll be right there. Before doing anything further, he apologizes as he overheard the conversation between her and Schweier. He then reassures her that RI will do everything they can to help them recover from the heavy losses they've sustained before she interrupts him, stating that this isn't the time to be talking about that. After he departs, Chen turns to Hoshiguma. Don't worry, Hoshiguma. You should know that Swire is trying to stabilize the situation. <sighs> Both of you are too hot-headed. I just gave it to her straight. Loneman's casualties are heavy, and this is the truth that they're supposed to know. Don't say that. It's not like you. Well, it's for Loneman's sake. That's even less like you. You're a senior inspector. A high-ranking officer, not some politician. You've never been cut out for playing these little games. Indeed. This is not something that a proper inspector should do, but I have no choice. You're just overworked and need a good vacation. Perhaps. <laughs> I've thought about it before. Hoshiguma, I could use a really, really long vacation. Sure, after we see this through, don't die out there. Ochre or Spring City? How about Floria County instead? We could fit in another vacation the time it takes to get to Ochre. Maybe we can head back to Victoria and visit some old colleagues. I want to take a look around your hometown. Don't bother, it's nowhere near as interesting as Loneman. This actually cracks Chen up for a second before they're interrupted by a transmission. Apparently it's on a secret channel, so Hoshiguma sees herself out. We then hear a conversation between Chen and someone she refers to as XR02. 
They sound distressed and report that it seems that they're finding reunion everywhere before disclosing their location and condition. They're riddled with arrows and beg Chen not to come for them till after reunion leaves as it's clearly a trap. They finish by reassuring her that they wouldn't let the intel they've gathered slip into the enemy hands. Chen dismisses their concerns and reassures that they'll be backing them up immediately before making a remark about the intel being time sensitive and its priority to Loneman's mission. XR02 seems hesitant to agree to letting them do this when Chen cuts them off and tells them they're not allowed to die before making it in order for them to stay alive. XR02 pauses before agreeing. They just ask that Chen takes care of herself when all of a sudden their attention shifts to something moving and the call gets cut short. Chen then tries to call out for them, but she's met with silence before she directs her attention to Hoshiguma and asks her to gather their squads, and the two of them make their way towards Loneman. We then cut to the city of Loneman where Chen stands with the RI member from earlier. Chen inquires about RI's situation, but the operator nervously responds, stating that they were under no obligation to disclose such information while working with Loneman. Chen seems irritated by his response before explaining that she wasn't trying to pry, she was just checking to see if they needed any help. The operator reports that after countless defeats, Reunion seems to have stopped with any attempts to attack RI directly before mentioning that Lone Men had far worse things to deal with before realizing just how we phrase that, and beginning to apologize profusely. Chen brushes it aside and instead asks them for their help taking out a force of Reunion members that were blocking the route to the docks. They agree to this, and with that, Chen leads their forces into battle. As the battle's coming to an end, the operator working with them seems rather unimpressed with just how weak they were after hearing about the events of Chernobog. They mentioned that the reports on them were accurate, but the real issue at hand was no one knew what they were scheming. Chen follows up remarking to beware, as their greatest strength was their ability to do the unexpected before listing off an assortment of tactics that they've used up until this point, and questions just what else they have up their sleeve. The operator's response is basically the equivalent to an, yeah, I knew that, before they shift their attention to just where Amiya's squad was, as he realized they weren't back yet. I'm, I'm sorry. After seeing Chen visibly distressed by this question, she can only manage to whisper her name. We were separated from Amiya's squad. We weren't able to rendezvous with them, and due to the emergency, we had to turn around. He then asks if LGD abandoned you and Amiya. Yes. Since they haven't received any updates from you, they actually think your squad is missing. And he then desperately asks Chen just why. Even if they had an infamous reputation among the infected, he just beckoned how LGD could have abandon their partners. Chen admits that it's her fault as she prioritized the safety of Lone Men. He says it makes no difference as there was no point in talking about it any further, before trailing off about how he knew just what they thought of the infected. He then asks how many operators she'll need but remarks that he won't be one of the ones willing to help, and to not hit their allies in the field even if they are infected. Damn. I understand. If anyone is willing to join the LGD in this mission, you can let me know. You, you don't have to force yourselves. After he walks off, Hoshiguma approaches Chen. That drama with Swire earlier. Didn't you do that just to drum up support from Rhode Island? Then why'd you turn around and treat their personnel like that? You're mistaken, Hoshikuma. I had no such intentions. Perhaps. I would have liked to see you be more forthcoming. You look a lot more relieved now. To be honest, if I was in his position, I would have been angry as well. Be thankful that the warriors of Rhodes Island are fairly easygoing. Hoshiguma then pauses before stating that she still doesn't understand why she abandoned R.I. the way she did, even if it was an emergency. Chan answers her, stating that there were too many unknown variables that she wouldn't risk her squad to. I'm not convinced. 
Haoshiguma, our plans have already been laid out. Haoshiguma then shows where her loyalty stands when she makes a remark about how she won't wait on Swire for orders, as she'll only take them from Chen. Until the conditions are met, the specifics are confidential. So, the orders are from Mr. Wei? You're free to speculate. Even now, I don't know what your objective is. There are few in Lonemen who have the power to make Lonemen go this far. I appreciate what Mr. Wei has done, but I will never respect him. And what has happened today is just one of those reasons. This is all necessary. That's just your excuse. <sighs> Chen, you're either overthinking this or you're not even able to convince yourself. Maybe. Suddenly, Chen hollers for one of the LGD guards to call Swire. Hello. We've left Rhode Island. Swire, you can begin. I bet it felt pretty good yelling at me earlier, huh? We may not get along, but it's not to that extent. I was exaggerating. I wasn't, though. I thoroughly enjoyed it. You piece of- Fine, fine. Swire then remarks about how it's odd that neither of them know about the other's mission, and wonders why she didn't want R.I. to get involved, before poking fun at her, asking if it was for atonement. Chen simply replies that you, Amiya, and R.I. are also unknown factors, but that she has faith in your abilities, she just didn't want them adding to the confusion. Especially Kelsey. She then remarks that things just won't go according to plan with her. Apparently Swire has never met her, and Chen just compares her to her grandfather, but without a ventilator. Chen finally gets the two of them back on track with their missions, and the two of them disconnect. She then gathers Hoshiguma and the rest of their forces as they make their way to the Mukwo warehouse, where we last heard from the mysterious XR-02. After some time, Chen and Hoshiguma's party find themselves not far from the warehouse when they stop to converse. It seems they had already sent out a scouting party who had reported that the path ahead was basically clear of anyone, but that there were signs of things being dragged around. Oddly enough, this led Chen to believe that there is an ambush lying in wait. There's a brief pause before Hoshiguma questions if XR02 is someone named Fal, to which Chen confirms. Apparently she accidentally overheard and immediately recognized his voice as she's known him for over 10 years. She then questions just why she made him an informant. It seems she frequented his bar around a year ago, but he just disappeared after becoming infected. Chen relays that he had actually been an informant before that, possibly hinting that it was because of the missions he undertook that he became infected. But as the rain begins to come down harder, Chen decides it's time to clear out the ambushes when Hoshigum interjects. She's concerned with how much time Fal has left before he bleeds out. She then asks to lead the fight so they can take care of this as fast as possible. I'll draw Reunion's fire. The rest of you should seize the opportunities, surround them, and end this battle quickly. Too dangerous. But it's the fastest way to win. You can trust me on this. I always trust you. Follow Hoshiguma's instructions. Make it quick. The agents in the background confirm and the party gets ready to take on the enemy. Hoshiguma goes to Chen one last time to reassure her that she'll be able to handle everything in no less than three minutes. As more of the reunion forces dwindle, they begin to make the retreat when we cut to an enemy soldier questioning why everyone was running away, and they begin to order the casters to attack Hoshiguma. They pay him no mind though when Hoshiguma comes barreling forward, leaving the soldier trembling as she makes her way towards him. You're the last one. Oh, it's even someone save me. You plan to stop me like this? No, no. I no. You plan to stop me like this. Spare me, please. You're not even worthy of being food for my Hanya. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. Um, we then cut to the rest of the agents beginning to approach the scene. Holy... We haven't even launched our attack yet. It seems Hoshiguma, despite my combat record showing otherwise, 
absolutely destroyed the entire force all by herself, and for whatever reason, the LGD forces actually kept track and they clocked her in at two and a half minutes before concluding that she is truly a demon. Chen chimes in saying to be glad that they didn't know her five years ago, and that it's apparently been quite some time since she's seen her fight like this. She then asks about the stragglers when one of the guards reports that they've already been captured by the various squads before making note of Hoshiguma waving at Chen. She makes her way over with a medic and asks Hoshiguma what she learned from the reunion soldier she scared the soul out of. It seems Fowl was just unfortunate enough to end up near where Reunion had already rallied their forces and was ambushed due to that. After confirming that there were no traps rigged up, the two of them make their way to the front of the warehouse. They then attempt to open the door, but it's jammed. Chen intends to cut a hole through it when Hoshiguma straight up just barrels through it with sheer strength and the two rush inside. Chen then manages to get XRO2 on the phone, but when she starts to ask for his location, he responds that he's going to take care of the commotion that they were causing, thinking they were reunion. But after she clears up the situation, he reports that he's in the very back and they rush to him. But as they approach, they see that he's grievously wounded as he's laying against a stack of boxes. After taking it all in, Chen is the first to speak up. That wound. What happened to your eyes? I wasn't careful enough. Got hit by arts. Don't worry about it. It doesn't matter now. This... <coughs> is for you. Medic, staunch is bleeding. No, Madam Chen. There's no need. I've already accepted. Stop talking! It's true. Do you see how many times I've been shot? I'm blind. I don't want to move anymore. I've had enough of the pain. I'm so tired. Take it, Madam Chen. S249. TAF106. 49. I've memorized the location. He then mentions that apparently the intel he gathered was only reported to one of the reunion leaders and to look into why. I will. <coughs> it was no easy task for me to get this. Anyway, Madam Chen, I didn't expect things to end up like this. Even though I was finally able to make a contribution, I didn't think this would be how I did it. None of us did. Thanks to your bravery, we now have a chance to stop the enemy. <laughs> I never liked Lonman, and now Lonman never liked me. But now I finally managed to do something for Lonman. Not bad for a bum like me, right? You're calling one of the Chung Shui Big Three a bum? Compared to you and Madame Oni, I'm nothing more than a bum. Madame Chen, how's Madame Oni doing? Is she still working as inspector? She is. She's been my partner for a long time. Madame Chen, Madame Oni is too honest and frank. No one in the gang <coughs> dared challenge her. But she is no match for those loneman moguls. Please, keep an eye on her. Don't let anyone demean her. I won't let those stuck-up plutocrats insult her because of her background. This is the only favor I ask of you. Just one. <coughs> <coughs> Don't worry, Hoshigun was very strong. No one can hurt her. No matter how powerful, everyone has their limits. The entire LGD stands with her. Good. That's a relief. Madam Oni, Madam Chen, I have no regrets now. Madam Chen, are you still here? I am. Am I a good person? Whew. A few years ago, a bit hard to say, but 
now you are without a doubt. Loneman is proud of having citizens like you. <laughs> a pathetic infected can be a good citizen. Some people in Loneman are indeed obsessed with Aripathy, but you'd be better off asking Loneman directly. <laughs> How do I do that? Will the city answer me? <laughs> I will, on its behalf. And it says, I don't mind, Fal. You have always been, and always will be, one of Loneman's best. Thank you, Madam Chen. Madam Chen, there's two things I want you to relay to Madam Oni. You should tell her yourself. What do you mean? Are you saying? Boss, it's me. I'm right here. Madam Chen, you should have told me sooner. She chose not to say anything. Boss, did I do a good job? Not good enough. You can't call it a good job until you survive to see things through. Oh, damn. <laughs> I've already used up all my luck to have you carry me on your back, boss. Anywhere you want to go, you always refuse to tell me where you came from. Here, Loneman. As a matter of fact, I've never been to other cities. If possible, just bury me in that old place. The hideout? But that place is a complete wreck now. Long deserted. To be honest, I'm not sure how I'd clean it up. It's okay. As long as I'm with the others. I will. Boss. Even though we've always been scared of you. We also always cheered you on. We've always cheered. Same here. Fal then passes away as the scene cuts to black. We then cut back to Chen and Hoshiguma. Hoshiguma is spacing out from everything that just happened when she finally notices Chen calling her name. Hoshiguma. Hey. Hoshiguma. H huh? Hey. You don't look so good. I'm fine. I was just thinking. I didn't think you'd get dragged into this. Don't worry. You know how I am. It's all in the past now. Or, as we say in Loneman, such is fate. Do people in the Far East believe in fate? Having been through so many things, even if I didn't believe it before, I have to accept it now. Hoshiguma then changes the subject and asks if Fal's intel was accurate. Chen confirms confidently before leading her to the location mentioned. The two of them begin to assess the situation as they take note of Reunion's activity in the area. Suddenly their attention shifts to some sort of project being built in the back streets of Loneman. As they're checking it out, Chen mentions blowing up their communication facility to deal a heavy blow to Reunion's forces, and getting them one step closer to taking back the LGD headquarters. Chen then speaks up about the intel report. Apparently Reunion wasn't just there to make a forward base, they were looking for some high value target and it was of the utmost importance that they located them first. Hoshiguma begins to question just what they're doing in the wealthy districts and who exactly the high value target they were trying to find was. This leaves Chen rather suspicious of all the activity though, since everyone in that district should have been evacuated. After some discussion, Hoshiguma and Chen decide to keep observing the Reunion members lying in wait. The two of them then assemble their squads and quietly take out a couple of Reunion soldiers before taking notice of a larger group trying to break into a house. As they're surveying the enemy forces, Chen takes notice of a member carrying around some radio equipment so she calls for her snipers to take them out before they can relay a transmission. 
The two of them then engaged the enemy head-on, taking a quick but decisive victory, and after learning nothing of importance from the captured soldiers, they made their way back to the streets of Lone Man, where Hoshiguma seemed lost in thought. What are you looking at that has you so absorbed? Didn't this used to be University Road? Hmm? Seems so. Its name was changed later. I think this is where my home used to be. She then notices a gold plaque among the brick walls with Taehong Road 88 written across it. Wasn't your apartment in Taibo? This was the estate that belonged to my biological father's clan. Looks like it's been renovated. So much time has passed that I barely recognize it anymore. Did you live here before studying abroad in Victoria? Even though I've heard that both you and Mr. Wei were born to Yen aristocrats, it's really quite astonishing to see a mansion this big. Aristocrats? They were, but I'm not. But your mansion here, how hmm. should I call it? The Chen Estate will do. Come in. Chen cuts open the door with ease and proceeds to walk in. Whoa, whoa, isn't this your own house? Why'd you slice the door open? I forgot to bring the key. Besides, Reunion also just opened the hole along the side wall. They might have caused some unexpected damage. That doesn't mean you should... Ah, forget it, if you say so. Hoshiguma then follows her in. No need to take off your shoes. Are you serious? Chen, answer me honestly. Do you hate your old man? He doesn't deserve to be my father. Okay. If I remembered correctly, you joined the LGD right after you graduated from Victoria and returned to Loneman. I was living in the dorms at the time. So you never returned here after that? I have no lingering attachments to this place. People who say stuff like that usually have a lot more going on in their mind. Anyways, do you have any ideas about what this high value target might be? Chen? Chen stood still in silence, lost in her thoughts, completely unaware of Hoshiguma. She's deep in her own little world again, huh? Chen, I'll be waiting by the door. Call me when you're ready to go. Suddenly, everything fades to black. Keep all the toys on your own. Do not go outside. Do not talk to anyone about the mission. Do not make eye contact with adults without the mission. As Chen's surroundings begin to come back, she finds herself in another room of the estate. You really kept this room clean all this time. Hmm. How generous of you to keep a tidy bed for me. Or is this some kind of malediction because you think I'm bad luck? Wait. The photo. Right? The photo. Again, Chen finds herself slipping into this darkness. You shall receive no love from me, not in the slightest. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I can't stand you. Just seeing you makes me want to peel the skin off my arm. I cannot tolerate any of you. I am too selfish, but I cannot live like this anymore. One day, all of you will understand. If you hate me, so be it. Because I hate you too. And that's how it should be. But as the voices fade, so does the darkness, leaving Chen fixated on a picture of herself as a child. But the strange thing is that she's accompanied by what appears to be an equally young Tallulah? Here it is. A photo from such a long time ago. I thought it had been lost. Wait. No. Could this be what they're searching for? What's going on? Why would they be after this? Have you lost your marbles as well? I'll certainly help you, but what are you thinking? Why here? Why now? <sighs> what I expect. Of course you won't answer me. After some time, Chen makes her way back to Hoshiguma and the rest of her force. Are you finally ready to go? We're going. Did you get any leads, or did you want to play with the balls of yarn a bit longer? Hard to believe you're still in the mood to crack jokes. I think your mood is just a tiny bit better than it was before, though. It's... as you said. Maybe I did have a bit too much on my mind. 
Hoshiguma then relays that the rest of their forces had been successfully driving Reunion out of various parts of the city. After acknowledging this, Chen rallies her forces, ever determined to wipe out what remained of Reunion. After clearing out droves of enemies, we then cut to a pair of Reunion members in what seems to be an abandoned mall. The caster seems to be concerned over the differences in the situation playing out in Lone Men compared to Chernobog. They make note of just how much chaos and struggle took place in the process of their previous siege while things seem very desolate and uneventful during this one. They then make an outburst pointing out that even the area they were in looked abandoned and mostly depleted of valuables despite being the Posse Plaza. The other soldier then refers to some orders from Patriot, forbidding those kinds of actions, implying that they thought that the Reunion forces had taken off with some of the valuables when the caster cuts them off, saying that instead it looked empty intentionally, as if they had planned for this. The soldier chimes back in, stating that it was just their imagination, and that it was only a matter of time before Reunion was going to be crawling from every nook and cranny. From there, it would be an easy second coming of Chernobog, but this time, they were going to take it over instead of leaving it in ruins. The caster then asked the soldier if they knew that this plaza was actually the closest base to the LGD headquarters, and well, to get to the point, the rest of this conversation basically boils down to them making note of their allies going missing recently. Missing? What do you mean by that? It's strange, really. Their comms were still connected, but there was no response from them. We don't have a way of contacting them. And soon, no one will be able to contact you either. What? Who's there? From the window! They're outside the window! Hoshikuma and a squad of LGD officers break through the mall's windows to ambush the Reunion fighters. The Reunion soldier then announces LGD's arrival when the caster starts making their way to attack, but Hoshikuma easily manages to deflect the attacks directed at her. The caster then swears under his breath before calling for his allies to back them up. Chen then gets a hold of the radio before ordering her soldiers to pulverize Reunion along with their bunkers. Suddenly, Chen receives a call from Swire. What the hell? Posse Plaza is my family's property. How dare you? Sorry, little miss. Reunion is still fighting back. We'll have to prioritize neutralizing them before we can think about- What did you say? You good for nothing! After Swire hangs up, Chen calls for LGD to attack. <sighs> oh, good grief. Try to be careful, though. These are our people's assets after all. They didn't move that piano away, probably because it's too heavy. That thing alone is worth 1.8 million LMD. The little miss was boasting to me about it, so try to be careful. You won't get away! Take cover! Quick! Behind that piano! Oops. Suddenly the piano is blown into pieces after taking a blast from a reunion caster. They smashed through our cover! Relocate! 1.8 million. Gone. Just like that. Suddenly the reunion soldier starts calling for his allies. Listen closely! We've taken the Basi Plaza as a new base, and have set up our defenses. However, the LGD suddenly attacked us from the roof, and they're currently thinning out our ranks. Alloy. LGD's main force is in Pasi Plaza. I repeat, Pasi. Plaza. In just a glimpse, Chen appears before the reunion soldier. Are you done? When did you? If you finish reporting, your mission is done. Chen strikes down the reunion soldier. Afterwards, she rallies her men, announcing that it was the time to let their presence be known to reunion and both forces begin a fierce clash. As the fighting ends, it really felt to be more of an assault than a clash to everyone, as their side was basically unscathed. That was easier than I expected. Really makes me more and more curious as to what happened in Chernobyl. Perhaps it's the same thing as what happened here, except the roots sank in deeper and the flames burned with more intensity. Don't let your guard down. Hoshiguma then makes a remark about always being on guard, before lamenting about the amount of damage that occurred. She then makes a comment that Mr. Wei will probably end up covering the damage, despite not being very fond of Squire's family. But suddenly she finds herself distracted by some earrings? Hey, a Swarovski crystal. Jen, isn't this your favorite brand? Not really. The pendants are nice, but the earrings aren't that good. Chen then speaks into her walkie and gives some orders to another squad. I 
rarely see you wear earrings. Well, I'm usually in uniform because of work. The few outfits I do have are gathering cobwebs in my wardrobe. Clothes, huh? It's hard picturing you as someone who spends money on that kind of stuff. Aren't you the same way with your motorbikes? What's wrong with wanting to look nice for yourself every now and then? Work takes up most of my time, but it's not my whole life after all. I'd be more likely to believe you if you didn't show up early every morning like clockwork, as well as taking on overtime hours that would scare anyone else to death. I guess all you can say is that life is tolerable for cops like us. Sometimes I ask myself, for those infected like Amiya, will they have a chance to go out shopping? Maybe to buy some accessories they like, or eat some of their favorite food? Maybe one day, but that day is not here yet. I guess so. This patch of dirt is truly unfair. Fal died, but I get to live on. They all died, and only I got to live. Chen, is that intel really worthwhile? It has to be. In the distance, it's revealed that one of the casters is still alive. Ah, you bastards! At least I'll bury you with me. Madam Chen, we found a large number of explosives on the third floor, right under where you're standing! LGT, prepare to meet your makers. What? Chen, over here! Get behind my shield! Under... me? Chen! 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 <sighs> That's the third time today, Sleeping Beauty. How long was I A out? A dozen seconds or so. Hoshikuma, step aside. I'll slash apart the debris. Sorry, but I can't do that. If I move, we're both done for. Let me handle this. Your shoulder. It doesn't matter. You won't be able to hold out much longer. You're holding up two floors worth of rubble on top of your shield. I don't need to. For much longer. Just until you woke up. Squat down and get ready to dash out. No matter how heavy it is, as long as I turn it over, it's not heavy at all. <laughs> You. Uh, uh, it feels like I lost my shoulder just to give it that little push. You saved me again. What's weird about that? How many times does that make now? And don't say that to make me so earnestly. It makes me feel so gross. Just hearing it. Let me rest a little. I feel like I just broke every bone in my body. Maybe it's your turn to let me take a nap. Sure, but the enemy's not gonna let you. No rest for the wicked, I suppose. Looks like I can still stand, if I muster my strength. You should go or re reorganize the squads. Quickly. Don't waste any more time on them. It's what they're after. I don't think it's too late to just take them all out first. Why can't you just go check to see who got injured first? And leave you to face reunion alone despite all your injuries? Chen, what are you doing? Two years ago in Hua Shui, you were chasing after a bandit leader. My leg was injured, but you believed in me and left me to fight alone. Do you still remember that? How long did it take me to catch him? Three hours. You trusted me back then. I still do. I can still fight. Why are you staying behind? Why aren't you taking the squads to recapture the LGD headquarters? Did you forget your main mission? It's the same as it was three years ago, and it's a responsibility that only you can fulfill. You did this back at the Mukwa warehouse earlier. When did you become so indecisive? Chen! I don't see any problems with protecting my colleague from these rioters. You've changed. You used to be much tougher. Leave you here? Of course I could. Now, it's as you said, after what I did to Amiya, I've also been conflicted. 
maybe I have changed. As time passed, I've had fewer grievances about Lonely. And I've been able to place my trust in more people. You are no longer just Inspector Hoshiguma. You are my friend, my partner. Your shield has protected me all this time. So once in a while, you should let me be your shield. Wow, you're not even gonna blush after saying all that? Sh shut the f up. <laughs> all right, all right. In that case, Chen, I'm leaving it to you. And now, with a determined look in her eye, Chen darts across the room, slashing down the reunion soldier she passes. After clearing out all of the enemies, she gets on her radio and calls one of the medics to let them know about Hoshiguma's status before checking on her. Has the bleeding stopped? You should know me by now. The wound is closed, but I won't be able to lift my shield for a while. How are our colleagues doing? Well, we were the only ones who fell, so I consider that a small win. So, you're really not bringing me with you? Reunion's commander may very well be hiding inside the LGD headquarters. It's going to be a brutal fight. I'm aware, but considering your condition, it's for the best. Wouldn't you agree? Hearing you say that stings a bit, but it's fine. I know better. Remember, be careful out there. I know. No matter how you look at it, Reunion is weaker than we expected. Despite that, they still managed to take Chernobyl. Also, you have a weak point. I can't stress this enough, but never let your thoughts consume you. Ever. Don't be so obsessed with something that you neglect the other possibilities. There's nothing out there worth going off to battle for. Except your continued existence. I'll treat this as your advice to me. I'll take it to heart. Hurry up and get better. I'll be waiting for you. For your return, after this mission is finished. I'll protect the medic team. You should get going. Sure. Chen then makes her way out of the building when an LGD operator contacts her to inform her of the various reunion movements and their progress eliminating them, before concluding that they were on their way to regroup with the other teams. Chen confirms and relays new orders before getting off the call, but before she has a chance to catch her breath, Swire gives her a ring. Swire immediately gets in her ear about the damages done to the area and presumably the piano in the previous fight. This leads to Chen trying to distract her by bringing up a restaurant they used to visit, and after some back and forth, it seems Swire has put aside her issue in favor of some food with Chen. In the midst of a fight that Chen can constantly hear picking back up as Swire describes the order she wants. Uh, Chen, I want a steak, tomato, and egg burger. No problem. Sorry for accidentally locking you up in the vault that other time. You call that an accident? I know, you did that on purpose. Whatever, it felt cathartic splashing water all over you this morning, so I guess we're even. Hey, uh, Chen? Hmm? Safety first. Don't throw your life away for the sake of what's immediately in front of you. Remember that there are lots of people who are counting on you. Hmm. Is that so? Thanks for your advice. Now that you're in front of the restaurant, that means you're almost at the LGD headquarters, right? That's right. Good luck. After the phone call ends, Chen makes her way to a rendezvous point near the LGD headquarters where a large force of her officers wait. Madam Chen, 4th Mobile Squad reporting in. Good work. All of you assembled here are the cream of the crop. As we speak, many of our colleagues are still out there fighting, but we have our own mission. The building in front of us used to be the symbol of lone men's safety, the embodiment of law and order, the heart of the LGD. But now, it has fallen into Reunion's hands, and has been tainted by conspiracy and warfare. Some of you might see this as just another job. Some of you might be saddened, while others might be enraged. No matter how you feel, we are the LGD. We aren't rioters, nor are we criminals. We will take back our headquarters, not necessarily for the sake of pride or justice. We will do it because we are the LGD, and we will take back what belongs to us. That's the only reason we need. Do not make lone men worry about us. Do I make myself clear? Obedience, diligence, and perseverance 
it's time. Let us rid the LGD headquarters of every last reunion member. Yes, yes ma'am! Let's go! After that speech from Chen, the team was high in morale and ready to take back their headquarters. The forces then began their siege of the building, clearing out every opposition with ease as they advanced through the floors. After what seemed to be a rather short amount of time, Chen and her forces were able to take back the majority of the building without much effort at all. This brings up concerns with some of the men, especially with just how easy it was to get in and with how empty most of the area was that they were surveying. Chen seems to have noticed this as well, but dismisses their concerns and states to follow the plans to take the building back. After this, she relays orders for the next part of the plan, and the agents confirm before the teams take off to perform their separate roles. As Chen's team moved through the building, one of the agents announced that they found out that Reunion was using the roof as a command center. Chen briefly thinks this over and states that it's more than likely a trap. But we don't have a choice, do we, man? That's right. Taking back the rooftop would be like lighting Lone Man's signal beacon. We will let Reunion witness the moment when LGD headquarters returns to our hands. We gotta leave them all here. Get ready. There are still a few hours to go. Let the recon and engineer squads go first. The combat squad will have some time to rest up before the main operation begins. Don't waste even the smallest opportunity to create an advantage. Expect our enemies to fight to the death. After this, we transition to Chen and party making their way further up the floors of the building when one of the officers speaks up. They state that they're really starting to get weirded out by the building, noting that as they ascended through the floors that they were met with little resistance and different agents kept dealing with strange occurrences like disappearing reunion members and the sounds of whispering coming from nowhere. <sighs> Let's go first. I don't have time for your nonsensical ghost stories. Even if there was something anomalous going on, I'll handle it after this is all over. The team then makes their way to the top floor when Chen states for the rest of them to secure it while she moves onto the roof alone. One of the agents begins to speak up, asking if she's sure, as they could still be of help to her. She dismisses their concerns though, and states that it's not that she doesn't think that they can't be of help, but that there'll be a bigger help clearing out the building and giving her less to worry about, and to back her up once they were done with that. In that case, we won't get in your way, Madam Chen. Lone Min is counting on you. Wrong. Lone Min is counting on us. Y yes sir! Should I have said ma'am? Hurry up! Uh, y yes sir, uh, I mean ma'am, I'm, yeah, affirmative, uh, right away. They then part ways, and as Chen makes her way to the rooftop, we're met with a familiar voice. Good evening, madam. You charged straight into my trap alone. Should I call you brave, or just stupid? You have nowhere to run, reunion commander. Mephisto then steps out of the shadows, accompanied by a squad of various reunion members. Is that so? From my perspective, madam, you are the one who has nowhere to run. My comrades shall devour you. T Talk is cheap. Show me what you've got. Chen then wastes no time to take out all of the forces ahem, by herself, when it seems the rest of the LGD forces have made their way to the roof. You should have never set foot here, Reunion. You're no match for me. You defeated all my comrades single-handedly. Perhaps I must reevaluate your abilities, madam. That's enough. No. Far from it. Fast. Give her a shakedown. Understood. Those on the roof, get down! Boss then takes aim before sending a round flying just past Chen as the LGD agents began to take cover. Chen seems stuck on Foss though, and acknowledges that despite taking precautions for ranged foes that he is something else when she recognizes just who he is. Wait, were you arrested by LGD before? <laughs> Your bunch caused him a great deal of grief, but it's nothing compared to what Ursus did to us. He missed that shot on purpose, dear madam. We'll spare your life this once, so take this as a gesture of kindness. Right now, the seeds of unrest have been sown with the moment. It was your organization's corruption and negligence that gave him the chance to cooperate with us. Reunion scum, you know nothing about this world. Were you trying to say something profound? Did you think that Foss was rescued by Reunion? There were many infected in the LGD at the time. Twenty-one. Did you think at least four of them would side with Reunion? But even those four were set up by me. After they got in contact with you, did you lock one of them up? Very clever, madam. She ran away. 
Have you still not realized the situation you're in now? Of course! I figured it out! My squad has been crushed, and I'm the only one left. Our forces wandering around outside are hopelessly weak, and my comrades have basically lost their will to fight. Is this what you wanted to hear me say? I suppose you're not that arrogant after all. Well then, come my guards. Rise. Suddenly, the fallen reunion soldiers are reanimated, making horrible wretches as they get back to the feet. What did you do? The bits of Virginium on their bodies are growing? The Virginium will pierce through their bodies and become their new form. Behold, officer. These are my guards. My immortal guards. The reanimated guards begin to make their way towards Chen and her forces, but as they start to clash, Chen takes note of a weird powder that's coming from Mephisto. Take it all, my herd. My comrades. My comrades need healing. They need me. Arts? All squads, be on alert. The enemy commander is casting wide-range arts using some kind of powder. Don't worry, madam. This does not concern you, as you are not my comrade. The dust released by Mephisto causes the resurrected reunion soldiers to enter a frenzy, some even screaming and retching for blood. Quiet now! Suddenly, one of the agents approaches Madam Chen. Madam Chen, it's looking bad. All the defeated reunion members started to transform into hulking monstrosities after coming in contact with that powder. They started attacking us again, and they're slowly moving towards our defense line. Just how many of them have transformed? All of them! They are my herd, as well as my brethren. G7, G6, you, I... They will never fall because I will take away all their pain. You're just manipulating them like puppets. How can you call them your brethren? I see no difference between the two. For the greater good, we are willing to become anything. If this is what you call the greater good. Looks like you're the only one I need to get rid of. You know, you have a sense of purpose, and the will to get it done. I'm quite drawn to you, madam. Suddenly we hear an outburst from an LGD officer for the snipers to fire around at Mephisto, but when they do, one of the reanimated guards takes the bullet for him. As the shot makes contact, an explosion goes off, but when the smoke clears, they seem completely unfazed. Mephisto then boasts about the durability of his guards when the one that was shot just stands there menacingly, staring down the LGD officers. This leaves the officers in complete disbelief. Apparently that round had enough firepower behind it to take down a fortified wall within the city. Don't waste your effort. Wounds will heal. Flesh will harden. Life will return. Their weapons cannot hurt my guards after all. I prepared them especially for you. Rise, my comrades. Don't let anyone interfere with our conversation. The reanimated reunion begin to frenzy as Mephisto seems to almost conduct their assault on LGD. As they fight off the waves, an LGD agent gets in contact with Chen to report that this fight wasn't limited to the headquarters. They were basically facing a mini zombie apocalypse throughout the city. In a matter of minutes, all of her team were forced to engage in melee combat with Reunion, so she promptly relays just to take care of themselves in her nearby vicinity before returning her attention to Mephisto. Majestic, isn't it? After so many battles, their minds seem to have fallen apart, but their bodies are still healthy and strong. Sheer strength seems to be able to slightly make up for mistakes in decision making. At least we'll have ample time to slowly talk through our issues. I'd like to have a fruitful discussion with you, madam, about things that aren't related to this battle. There's no need for that. I'll just kill you now. Chen then darts towards Mephisto, but is cut off by one of his guards. You're fast, but not fast enough. Suddenly, a powerful bolt is sent flying towards Chen, but she cuts it out of the air with one swift slice. She deflected my shot with her blade. <laughs> that black-haired kid has a good read on my movements. Sorry, madam. I can pretty much predict all your possible moves. All I need to do is block you off a bit. This way, you'll never be able to close the gap. So, which do you prefer? Sharp arrows, explosive bolts, or heavy spikes? Looks like you really came here prepared. But when a chess master finishes his preparations, he's assuming that his opponent will be playing the other color. Wait, why is my powder still sticking to her body? 
So that's what's going on. I see. I'm not good with the theoretical stuff like you, but I simply come prepared for everything. Your chessboard cannot contain me. You're just a brat, and I am no chess piece. I am Lone Man's Blade. Hmm. The line between bravery and stupidity is fine indeed. Or were you planning to pull out some kind of trump card? If I remember correctly, I've never seen you use that other sword of yours in combat. Surely it's not just there for decoration, right? <laughs> this sword was not meant to be drawn against the likes of you. You aren't worthy of it, no matter what. However, you must pay for your sins, for all you've done to the innocent people of Lone Man and Chernobog. Right here, right now. The scene then fades into a memory between Chen and Wei Yan Wu. This belongs to you now. I don't, I don't need it. Need well, it. Well, 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 well. Just treat it as a little. Are you not, not afraid? Afraid, afraid of what? You're turning against me? Yes. yes. No. I am not. Why is that? Because, because I am not scared, scared of death. 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 This is no oil. You'll come, You'll come to gradually understand. Do, Do not waste its power on trivial things. A dragon slaying sword, sword shall only be unsheathed against the world. Who you choose to draw this upon is entirely up to you. And with the mid-fight flashback trope fulfilled, we shift our focus back to the situation currently at hand. The sword is still hibernating. You still refuse to be unsheathed, even in this situation. But right now, Chi Xiao, you must drink the blood. It's your turn to move. If you can kill me here, all of my forces will collapse. It would be such a pity if you refused to even have a chat with me. Please, come kill me. If you can, that is. Suddenly, one of the LGD officers hollers for Chen. Madam Chen, the enemy's attacks are too overwhelming. We can't afford to drag this out any longer. The situation is quite straightforward. Only one of us will survive. Promise to keep my last words short, madam, as long as you can make me say them. Do you think of yourself as a martyr? Nobody will remember you after you die. Being dead and being respected are two completely different matters. What matters is what you've done in life, not how you die. I obviously wish for nothing more than to play with worthwhile foes and then to tie a worthwhile death. But I don't think you'll be able to help me fulfill my desires after all. You will suffer a terrible defeat, madam. Now it's my turn to point out the situation that you're in. Your confidence was built upon the fall of Chernobog, but this isn't Chernobog. Nor is this the ruthless land of Ursus. The mighty lone man will not fall into the hands of scum like you. Well said. Faust, I know. Foss and the guard then attempt to attack Chen at the same time, but she easily fends them off with a crimson flash of heart that cuts clean through the bolt and the guard. Was that a slash? No. Impossible, how? Could this be arts? How can this be? It, don't be afraid. It won't hurt you. There's no need to be afraid. <laughs> Your skills are formidable. You use your arts to detonate Foss' attack in advance, and your blade. It broke through my formation. It even cut through my guard's neck and almost reached me. If I had let you come a few steps closer, you would have cut me in half. Not even Foss would have been able to stop you. You won't be so lucky next time. Unfortunately, there won't be a next time. Your secret has been exposed, madam. You've heard the saying, never try the same trick twice. You can't fool your audience again after the secret comes out. The distance between us is greater than your arts range, isn't it? The rooftop is only so big, you don't have much room to move back. How much closer can you get? Bust, show her what real arts are. I know your position all too well. An exposed sniper poses no... <laughs> what? Chen narrowly manages to deflect two simultaneous shots with their arts, one coming from a different location than Faust. You are remarkable, Madam Chen. Are you able to cut through any shot fired at you? Just like before, I could barely even see your movements. 
Chen then calls out to Foss, openly questioning just how they were able to make those two simultaneous shots when there was nobody coming from that direction. <sighs> There's no need for you to try and guess, officer. You won't figure it out. Now, how many shots will you be able to deflect? Ten? Forty? A hundred? But how about the shrapnel? The blast? What about the arts inside? Are you able to stop all of it? This is nonsense. Then let's keep going! Suddenly, several shots are sent flying towards Chen, but she draws the Qi Xiao and cuts him down with her heart before looking Mephisto dead in the eyes. Officer, I know what you are. My Originium arts only work on the infected. I don't care. Don't you know that you're only going to become his pawn? To be discarded when you've served your purpose? You can have those words back. We will not give you the chance. Lone Min will not. Suddenly, one of the LGD agents reports to Chen that their forces were being overwhelmed, causing them to have to retreat. As soon as I want to move, the sniper will attack me from all directions. Just how is he doing that? I can neutralize his ranged attacks, but if I let him keep wearing me down, I won't last long. I'll have to seize victory in a single decisive moment. I don't care what you have to say. I don't have time to listen to your blathering. I can see a red aura congealing around her. She's about to use her arts. Mephisto, according to the plan, if I shoot her now, she'll have to stop her casting or she'll die in the explosion. But wouldn't this be the best opportunity to break her spirit? Hold your fire, and just watch her first. We will miss our opportunity. Broader strategic goals are more important than the specific tactics used to get there, Faust. <sighs> Suddenly, the scene fades to black when the voice from earlier is heard once more. Come with me. Don't stay here anymore. Do you not want to leave here? Let's get far, far away from these people, and this place. Do you really not know? He's the reason why all the adults treat us like this. It's all his fault. I hate this accursed city. I hate him. Don't make me hate you too. Chi Xiao. Unsheath. What? Guards, form a line. Stop her. <sighs> no. I lost control of Chi Xiao. Why now of all times? Her hearts paused. Her casting failed. Fast. Do it now. Command fire. Several explosive tipped bolts are then lodged in Chen's direction. Damn it, scatter! But she managed to deflect them in time, killing some of Mephisto's elite guards in the process. What a terrifying weapon! Just a dispersion of your arts was powerful enough to block all the bolts, as well as disable three of my guards. But you were still hit by the blast, weren't you? <coughs> uh, one rib. No. Two are broken? I can endure it. But this firepower... There's no way I can take another... Oh, it's just like our leader said. Madam... It's not that you don't want to kill me, you simply cannot unsheath that sword. What did you say? Who told you that? Oh, you should know this name, Madam Chen. As you said, this sword was not meant to be used against someone like me. Your recklessness disrupted its intended mechanism. If we seized the opportunity to attack you while you were defenseless, you would have already been turned into dust. She already knows all your weaknesses. You waste your breath. We will destroy this world as it currently is. If we allow the rampant corruption to grow, the entire world will rot away. Only by cutting it all away can these rusted cities break free from their chains and be born anew. Suddenly, Mephisto's herd starts to rile back up, forming a wall between him and Chen. But she pays them no mind, easily cutting them down along the way to Mephisto. Come, Madam Chen. Aren't you also very disappointed in Lone Min? Hmm. Our leader is waiting for you. 
There's no reason why you need to bow your head to Loman, is there? I have my duties. That has nothing to do with which side you take. While you keep talking about these mundane duties, you know just how our fellow peoples are being treated. Just give me a sign, then I'll call off the attack immediately. Come, join us. Let us work together towards the greater good. This mouthful of blood is the only sign I have for you. What kind of noble goals could Reunion possibly have if they hire a lowlife like you? Spare me your nonsense! <sighs> so that's how it's going to be. If you don't believe me, then that's your loss. You can spend your last moments squirming all you want. My guardian and his bolts will show you the true power of the infected. You are all alone. While we are united and strong, your death will be fitting. Save those rotten words until after you're dead. Or you could forcefully activate the Originium arts imbued in that sword. Something terrible will happen, right? I'll let you decide your own fate. Do you think you'll get a hero's death? Listen, Brent. When one dies, nothing is left behind. If I have to sacrifice myself to kill you, I'll do it, even though it's not worth it. Hmm. Well, we have nothing more to talk about then. Goodbye, Madam Chen. Fast. Command, fuck. You don't need to go that far, Madam Chen. What? That? A helicopter? No, that doesn't look like one. It's... Blaze, jump! Suddenly, Blaze, a feline woman with long black hair flowing past her cat ears, equipped with an oversized chainsaw, drops from the air with a Mia. What? Someone's jumping down! As terror rises, her eyes become blind. Damn! Rhodes Island? From above? These black lines. Wait, is that you? As the tears dry, she weeps silently. <laughs> What's, what's going on here? Why are my guards screaming as if they're grieving? My guards should have wiped all their emotions, so why? What's going on? Is that you? Damn you! The rabbit of Rhodes Island! I temporarily restricted their movement, but it'll only last for about 10 seconds. That's more than enough time for me to make a safe zone. Let's do it, Blaze! Are we ready to go all out? Yes! Now! We're about to land, your bottom might get a little sore. Don't drop me! Of course not. Command, fire. Don't underestimate us! My bolts were diverted by the wind. How could this... Blaze, cut the roof apart from underneath those reunion troops! Sure thing, but make sure to hold on tight. I can only do this once every few months. Meanwhile, man, am I glad to be rid of them reunion soldiers. I don't really know if I could have taken much more. Yeah, I know. It was getting kind of ridiculous over here. I didn't think I was going to make it. Hey, uh, you hear something? Ah, uh, fuck. Back at the rooftop, Madam Shen was receiving a phone call. Hello? Hello? You don't need to be in such a hurry to get yourself killed. We're in the middle of a crisis. What are you doing on this channel? Oh, I just want to tell you that I'm done with my mission. Rhodes Island has something really powerful and they'll be here with it soon. They're already here. What was this mission of yours anyway? Coordinating with Rhodes Island. And there's a safe landing. Blaze, you can put me down. You... you guys... Madam Chen! <laughs> I'm here. Sorry it took us so long to get here, Madam Chen. In accordance to our agreement, Rhode Islands will now be supporting you. Suddenly, we cut back to a few minutes before Ri's arrival, where you're seen speaking to Blaze and Amiya. 
Here you are given three dialogue options. If you say, alright, it's time for your debut, Blaze will ask why y'all are so enthusiastic to help Chen out when she left your squad to die. Amir responds that it's in order to resolve Lone Man's problems first and foremost, or all of their efforts would be for nothing. Blaze begrudgingly agrees, however, if you tell her, well, uh, to go forth, the conversation goes a similar way, but Blaze seems more stoic and judgmental of Chen's actions here. The last option, and my personal favorite just because of how crude it is, goes, look at the sorry shape she's in. She needs your help, Amiya. To which Blaze responds, I mean, we look like we've been beaten up even worse than her, right? What a pain. I didn't expect that woman in the ruined city to be so arrogant. Calcite never even gave me a heads up. Amiya then chimes in, stating that they'll be sure to get curried once they've wrapped everything up, and with that, Blaze agrees before everyone launches out. We then cut back to where we were previously. Why are you bunch here? Just what the hell is Frost Nova doing? What's going on with her again? Did she pass out? You accursed rabbit. You and your entire rabble were supposed to freeze to death in Chernobog. I cannot die yet. As long as Eripathy continues to plague these lands, our battle will never end. We will rid the world of psychopaths like you, as well as the persecution that the infected face. <laughs> oh, come, little rabbit. If I am your enemy, then come kill me. Kill me. Kill me right now. No. You are not my enemy. <laughs> then I'll just slaughter you. If you seek a glorious death, you will not find it here. I only wish to destroy your hatred and malice. What happens to you is of no concern to me. But look at the infected around you! Your death will bring nothing to them! <laughs> you! I have no empathy to spare for the likes of you. At least, for the time being. Are you trying to make an enemy out of Reunion? Out of all of us? Do you want to taste how deep the wrath of the infected runs? Not all infected are the same. You and Miss Frostnova have nothing in common. Not everyone in Reunion is a psychopath like you. <laughs> what did she tell you? That woman. Aren't you misunderstanding something? I am the one who can control these cities and bend all these pawns to my will. Not her. That's why, if someone has to bring you to justice, then I will be the one to do it. That's right. Plus, weren't we enemies long ago? Right. We became enemies the moment you began to spread terror and tragedy. Amiya. Madam Chen, please hold on a little bit longer. Our support squad will be there shortly. Sorry. Huh? There's too much noise. I didn't hear your battle plan, Madam Chen. <laughs> I know. Give us your orders, Madam Chen! Yan has an old saying. To catch bandits, you must first catch the ringleader. In other words, if we want to destroy our enemies, we have to capture their commander first. Be careful, his mindless minions will rise up again and again. Free them from their suffering, if you can. I understand. Doctor. So... I guess we deployed with Blaze and Amiya. Anyways, we're here too and state that we'll lead the fight from the rear. Blaze and Amiya then coordinate a plan of action to break the enemy formation and take some of the pressure off of Chen when Chen addresses you. Doctor of Rhode Island. I'll be engaging the enemy commander next. The illusion of choice then returns once more and we're given the option to remain silent, ask her if she'll need help to clear the way, or basically just tell her that we're going to give her an opportunity to get to the enemy commander. Regardless of what our response is, she states, Regardless of what I said before, you have my trust this time. Rhode Island, are you in cahoots with the lone men now? Now that I'm seeing this for myself, I'm starting to realize how shameful this is for us infected. It only took the four of us to drive you into the corner. The only shameful thing here is you. Mephisto, your atrocities will end here. Boss, wipe them out. Every single one. Get them out of my sight. It's time to end this battle. Only then can 
and we prepare for the next one. Your orders, Doctor. Rhodes Island, follow my orders. Assist Madame Chen and reclaim the LGD headquarters. The two sides begin to clash in a vicious battle, but now that he was facing Chen with Ri's support, Mephisto was outmatched and easily cornered. You have nowhere left to run. <laughs> Damn you. Eh. And just where do you think you're going? <sighs> Put your hands where I can see them. I've seen through all your tricks, kid with the scales. I told you, that's not going to work. Blaze! <laughs> Don't worry, these attacks hurt about as much as firecrackers. You blocked my shots in advance? You know where they're coming from? Of course I do, I've already figured you out. Amiya, back off, I'm gonna use that. Got it, I'll disrupt Mephisto's guards again, so make it quick! Take this bit of my blood as a farewell gift, Reunion's phantom crossbowmen. See, and blast apart their disguise. Blaze then cuts into her own arm, and as the blood begins to surface, it bursts in the flames. You're using your own blood as incendiary? Ha! <laughs> Do I look like some sort of caster to you? Only some egotistical newbie would go around committing arson like that. Sorry, but this is just one of my fighting techniques. Show yourselves. You have nowhere else to hide. Suddenly, the aura from Blaze's arts fill the area and dissolve Foss' camouflage. In doing so, she reveals several phantom snipers that were assisting Foss when reports are received from the floors below that more reunion snipers were appearing. They begin to question if it was Foss' power that was causing all the strange phenomenons in the building earlier when Blaze realizes that they were actually refracting the light to make themselves seem invisible. After Blaze finishes revealing just how Foss managed to pull everything off, he actually compliments her intelligence. <laughs> it's all because of our great intel. Now that you know the gig's up, you should surrender. If you want to keep fighting, I'll make you pay for the deaths of Ace and Scout. <laughs> I don't even care if you weren't involved, kid. Some of the snipers then ask Foss if they want them to back him up, but he shows concern for their safety and asks for them to retreat, before making his way back to Mephisto. Foss, why aren't you shooting her? Attack my guards! Hurry! There are only four of them, just four, and only three of them pose any threat! Fire! Tear apart those sinners now! With the doctor's leadership, the three of us are more than enough to defeat all of you! Not to mention those infected who you harmed, who you robbed of their free will, to the point of not even being people anymore. Even that scaled boy next to you might not side with you anymore. His thoughts are filled with sorrow and turmoil. Mephisto, you are alone on this battlefield. Can you read my mind? No, I just felt it. So, you'd have no idea what I'm thinking. Suddenly, Foss fires several shots at Amiya. She's able to block them, but clearly struggling. A Amiya! I'm fine. I can barely block his shots. Uh, however, I won't be able to keep suppressing. <sighs> My control is slipping. Mephisto, let's go. Their reinforcements are wiping out our forces. We've never even seen some of them before. There's been a change in the plan. Our moves have been read. Why haven't our forces come? We have over 20 squads and two major brigades. So so why are none of them here still? Where is Crown Slayer? Or Frost Nova? This isn't like Chernobyl. We couldn't shut down the enemy's communications, so they were able to call lots of reinforcements, put up quite the resistance. Uh, why are they still not here yet? We won't know the reason unless we see it for ourselves. Let's get out of here first. Please, I'm about to reach my limit. Can you finish this? Sure thing, just me and that Chen lady should suffice. Suddenly Mephisto and Foss try to make a getaway, but Chen is there to cut them off. Did I give you permission to leave? Huh? You? Guards! Kill her! Kill her! <laughs> Over a dozen of them? It's gonna be a pain. They're coming at us! Chen! Thank you, Rhode Island's operator. Now nobody can get in my way. Huh? It's still no good. I 
don't have a way to completely counteract the cloaking. Forget it. This should be good enough. Chi Xiao. This time. Crimson overflowing. In one swift motion, Chen is able to cut down all of Mephisto's elite guards. But as the guards pass, a semblance of their humanity shows through, and with his dying breath, one of the guards says, Did you just unsheath your sword just then? Just one slash and you managed to cut down a dozen of those things? That sword... Amiya, I think I'm gonna start choosing my words a lot more carefully around her. Hmm. You! What did you do?! Without hesitating, Chen uses the Qi Xiao on Mephisto, but... Run! Foss pushes him out of the way only to be struck in Mephisto's place. Ah! Fast! Fast! <coughs> you're... You're injured! No! 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 It's over. Not... Yet. What? <coughs> <coughs> he lured me in to shoot from point blank. <laughs> Didn't you manage to block it, though? Yes, but they used the explosion to make their escape. Whoa. A chain of explosions? The entire top level is collapsing. We're not going to be able to chase after them. Half of that was your doing. Can't do a thing about that now, huh? As the building begins to collapse, Foss, Mephisto, and what's left of the reunion troops flee through the streets of Lone Man. Hurry, we need to go. No, I need to stay here until they come. We failed the step. You must leave. I failed? I failed? Impossible. Wasn't everything going according to plan? Did I not call for our reinforcements a long time ago? Were we betrayed? Was our information leaked? Who was it? Why does the LGD know about our deployment and our strategies? Just go! If we weren't betrayed, then who could have done it? Tallulah would never make a mistake. So she must have planned for this. No, that's impossible. Why would she set us up like this? Fast, there's no way I can accept this. I refuse to believe it. Just jump. I'll hold on to you. Eh. <laughs> Fine. Well, shoot, madam. Looks like this building's gonna need some serious renovating. It's a shame that those two kids got away, though. Those mindless followers are still coming at us like a cornered animal. Dealing with all them is gonna be a serious thorn in the side. Oh, at least we managed to take back the headquarters. This is our victory. Even if it's a short-lived one. Amiya. Hmm? Just... How did Rose Island manage to make it out of Chernobyl? Oh, well, Miss Blaze came to our aid in the nick of time. And there was a loudmouth LGD officer just outside the ruined city. It would have been easier if you just helped us in the first place instead of watching us from the sidelines. Hmm. I was expecting you to say something like... I didn't need Rose Island's help anyway, or I'd rather die than work with them. But at least you don't seem to be that stubborn. Is there anything else you'd like to say? If not, I'd like to head back to Rhodes Island. Hmm. I never knew Rhodes Island had an aircraft like that. Heh. <laughs> we have a lot of things that might surprise you. Just like you. We don't want to play our entire hand. You're not counting us as one of your cards, are you? Chen doesn't respond, so the two go about their way when an LGD officer reports to Chen that she has an incoming transmission from a private line. Hello? Chen is then met with the voice of Wei Yen Wu. Well done, Madam Chen. Is Madam Swire also on this channel? I am. Please, report your progress. Swire briefly mentions saving Rhode Island and arranging for some brigades for future events before asking Chen just what she did. I've already taken back. 
With Rhode Island's assistance, we've taken back the LGD headquarters. Their commander will spread word of their defeat through the ranks. The reunion forces left in Loneman have been corralled into our ambush points using the routes we arranged for them. Next, we just need to wait for their counterattack. My mission is now complete. Hmm. I've also received reports from a few of your other colleagues. All missions in the last phase have been completed flawlessly. Well done, all of you. We will now move on to the next phase. We then skip ahead to find Yu, Amiya, and Chen standing on the ruins of the rooftop where Chen is still on the phone with Chief Yen Wu. It seems he's aware of Amiya's presence and confirms with Chen that she can hear him. Very well then. I must apologize, leader of Rhodes Island. Though I can risk sending the LGD deep into enemy territory, I can't risk bringing any more players into this game. This next illusion of choice leads to the same dialogue, but essentially you either ask him what he means or point out that the situation is already chaotic. Doctor, beneath this land lies an invisible yet intricate net. No single city can break free from this net of conspiracy and intrigue, and especially not lonely, as it is situated in the midst of giants. Perhaps you already know this, Perhaps you don't. Nevertheless, I have to take all these factors into consideration. Chief Wei, you should have shared this information with us. At least, you should have told me if you wanted our mission to progress more smoothly. I must apologize yet again, Miss Amina. From my position, I simply cannot disclose all of our intel. If you were standing in my shoes, you would have made the same decision. What happened in Chernobog Ruins was a pity, but at least you achieved something. You used us to draw Reunion's attention. No, the LGD was right there with you. So this is where you cut in and have a moment of realization at the same time as Kalsi. Or maybe she told you this? I'm not sure. But it relays it like this. You used all of us as bait. Huh? He planned for all of this a long time ago. Reunion's infiltration only deepens as time passes, so he had to quickly make a decision. At the most crucial moment, when Reunion was most vulnerable, Rhodes Island was made to draw their attention. He, he led, led Reunion, Reunion to believe that LGD had been separated, and fooled them into thinking that Loneman was undefended. <laughs> well said, Doctor. Chief, of course you'd need us to hold Reunion back. The more the better, right? When the lurking reunion saw Loneman in such a state, there's no way they wouldn't spring at the opportunity. And as they began to emerge from their lairs, then BAM! Loneman's elite forces would be waiting for them, seemingly out of nowhere. How long have you been concealing Loneman's power? Did you already start preparing for this after the Chernobog incident? Loneman kept you safe, and helped you return to a position that could maximize your value. You left Amiya to die back there, in the middle of so many enemies. What kind of position are you talking about? I just hope that Rhodes Island can understand that we all have to face this difficult situation together. Miss Blaze! Doctor! It's fine! Miss Swire helped us defeat Reunion's forces, together! Loneman did not abandon us. At least we don't have any proof. <laughs> Our agreement is still valid. No matter what happened during the process, only the end result can satisfy me. No matter what happened. Doctor of Rhodes Island, I believe I made myself clear the last time we met. You do not have a choice in this matter, but at least you can choose how you eliminate your enemies. Once again, you're given some different dialogue options, but these actually have different results. If you tell him, I don't believe you or the snake oil you peddle, he'll remark, isn't that for the best, before mentioning that you weren't necessarily friends or enemies, and that some vigilance was for the best even when facing a common enemy. If you choose to be silent, he'll praise you for staying resound with your judgement, while not revealing your hand. He'll conclude his statement by making a remark that R.I. is a powerful partner, but that he's only looking for a partnership, not a representation of better terms between them and illegal infected. And lastly, if you say, nobody will happily smile and go on their way after being deceived, he'll remark that he wasn't intending to fool anyone outside objectively reunion, and to prevent revealing any secrets to them. He wraps this up by asking you if his goal motivates you at all. <sighs> Miss Amiya, 
Doctor, the cooperation between us has not ended yet. A counterattack is imminent. We will demonstrate Loneman's stature, wisdom, and unity to them. If possible, I would also like to witness Rhode Island's professionalism, resolve, and bravery. In 15 minutes, Madam Chen will return to fight at your side. Mr. Wei, I hope you don't forget what you just said. Because Rhodes Island won't. Naturally. And with that, Chief Yan Wu ends the call. After a brief moment, Amiya calls for you and Blaze to head out before checking in with Chen. Oh, by the way, Madam Chen, where's Inspector Hoshiguma? I don't see her around. Is she... alright? She had some minor injuries, nothing serious. Oh, I see. Madam Chen, Rhodes Island can also give you a checkup and provide some quick treatment if needed. No thanks. You don't have to worry about anything. Our medical procedures are completely confidential. A little bit of elbow grease is good enough. Huh. If you insist, then I won't force you. In that case, I'll see you later then, Madam Chen. The scene then fades out before we cut to a conversation between Yen Wu, Swire, and Chen. It's not completely clear if this is a new conversation or if we're touching back upon the earlier phone call, but Swire is just now getting on the line. Chief Wei, how is everything on your end? Good, of course. Otherwise, I wouldn't have time to chat with you here. Did they agree to slow down the operation? Yes, but there is a time limit. Today and tomorrow, if Reunion is still not contained after two days, you know what will happen. T only two days? That's not enough time, I can't- Two days and nights are already too generous. In comparison, I will only give you one day. One day? I want you to take care of everything within a day. Chief Wei, if they can help us, we can get rid of Reunion within hours. Wouldn't that minimize our losses? That's not important. Lone Men should be able to handle its own problems, once and for all. That is our first principle. That is what we need to demonstrate to them. So everyone, get moving. Go, Madam Chen. It is time to show Reunion some Loneman hospitality. Understood. Chief Wei, I do have one question. Even if you can't answer right now, I hope you can give me a reasonable guess after everything is over. You may ask. This is supposed to be Reunion's all-out attack. In that case, why has their leader, Tallulah, not appeared in Loneman? The conversation is cut short when the scene briefly fades from black before we're shown Chief Yen Wu with a young woman named Fumizuki by his side. Fumizuki is a Kirin woman with dark red hair flowing past her single red and pink horn. If you're unfamiliar with them, Kirin are basically mythical dragon-headed horses and an obnoxious fight in Monster Hunter. But anyway, Yen Wu seems to have something on his mind when Fumizuki approaches. Hmm. I thought things were progressing smoothly. Why are you frowning then? Have we received any response from Ursus? Still nothing. And we still can't get in contact with Speaker Wit. Unfortunately, our messenger hasn't even been able to meet him. By the looks of things, the Ursus Empire is completely opaque. <sighs> Fumizuki, I have a premonition that this whole thing is just the start of something much bigger. The last time I heard you say that was many years ago. When did I say that? I've completely forgotten why I would say something like that. That was right after we first met. Are you saying you've forgotten everything that's ever happened between no, us? No way! How could I? I just can't remember most things apart from our time together. Nice try, you sweet talker. Unfortunately, this isn't something you'll be able to forget. You said this to my face 20 years ago. That if we lost, this city would be under a different name and become just another stepping stone on the path to Earth's dominance. If we had lost, you wouldn't be the one sitting here. He would. <laughs> Duke Koshai. Alas, poor Tal. Don't you think she reminds us of him? But he's already dead. Killed by Tallulah herself. Episode 5, 
Necessary Solutions. Finale. Hey again. If you stuck around this long, you're probably here to find out just what happened over this last year. Well, every time I got to this point, I just kind of started spewing word vomit and venting, so this is my final attempt at trying to keep this as to the point as I can. As I previously mentioned on the channel discussions, I had to get out of a very toxic situation that was causing my detriment. Between my environment, inadequate living conditions, and the people I had to deal with, I found it difficult to find the energy to work on videos. I tried to stick things out where I lived because I was concerned about my father, who had just had a couple of strokes, when I was starting to notice some medical issues of my own developing. But I just ignored them and chalked it up to getting older. I eventually got to a breaking point during an incident where my well-being was threatened by a separate member of my family. After that went down, I got in contact with a good friend of mine who had previously mentioned possibly moving in, and he was kind enough to let me move in on a whim's notice. Mind you, he lived several states away, and I was moving from the middle of Texas, so this was a pretty vexing decision with my dad's state of health. And of course, the familiarity of the place you call home, but ultimately, I knew what the right choice was. Now, after settling in, I tried to get started back on the video, I was off to a good pace and even had some plans for something to fill in the gaps between the story. But, unfortunately, not long after the few live videos, I actually ended up in the ER. Long story short, I went in for one reason, and well, I was actually okay for what I went in for, but when I had an x-ray and a CT scan done, they noticed a mass near my spine, and this was quite the news, and just flat out had me completely overwhelmed. But of course, after that, you know, two of my animals had to go to the vet within the same week, so... Between everything, I just went back into a depressive episode, and I was stuck going through the motions, and though I'm looking into everything, it was just really getting to me in that moment, but oddly enough, one last tragic incident is what finally snapped me out of my funk. Unfortunately, on May 11th this year, we lost an amazing and wonderful person. Trevor Sternad, best known for his crazy vocals in the Detroit-based death metal band The Black Dahlia Murder, passed away. I couldn't really put it into words just how it felt when I found out, but for those of you who don't know, this man was a wonderfully genuine human being. He was silly, caring and outrageous, but still able to dish out lyrics that were as captivating as they were horrifying, and that's a good thing, just trust me. He also unapologetically pursued what he loved, and he was one of the biggest inspirations in so many different facets of my passions, and the band's music has been a staple in my library for a good chunk of my life, so... After a week or so had gone by, it just started to sink in, and I broke down, but in the midst of that, I realized that there was still so much I wanted to do still, and that I couldn't let myself keep living the way I did. I'm sorry if this has been hard to follow along, as I know it's just all over the place, but I felt like you all deserve some sort of explanation. Thank you all again for your patience with everything, and please remember to take care of yourselves. This is still a work in progress for myself, so please don't feel bad if it's something that you're struggling with. I know exactly how it is, and this has been drawn out for a bit longer than I anticipated, so I'll end it here. I hope y'all are doing well. Take care.